a lot of this course will be talking about curves. So let's get straight into the basics of the color curves here in Final Cut. From this little menu here, you can add any correction you like. And color curves is how you'll adjust contrast and also individual parts of the image. The luma curve here is where you'll start when you want more advanced control over contrast than is possible with the color wheels. So the color wheels and indeed the color board are mostly about getting the tonal range right. And that means getting the shadows near zero and the whites near 100. Now this shot is fairly well balanced. It's a tiny bit below zero and it's not quite at 100 in this frame, but it's generally pretty close. All you can really do with the wheels or the color board is shift things around in the midtones, reposition the shadows or the highlights. You can't actually do anything significant with contrast. But if we look at curves, this will let you play with contrast. Probably the simplest thing to know is to add contrast, put one point up and drag one point down to make a quick S curve. So the classic contrast S curve, let's see before, after, shifts the content away from the middle of the waveform there, pushes things more towards the highlights and the shadows, before, after, without moving the highlights or the shadows themselves. So the blacks stay black, the whites stay white, and there's less gray in the middle. The more you push this S around, the more contrasty it is, and you can go too far very quickly. Now, if this is an S curve, well, that's great, but what does it mean? Well, if you imagine the input is coming in at the bottom of this grid, so this is zero, black, and this is 50%, middle gray, and then this is 100%, white. Imagine that the input image is going up, hitting this line somewhere, and wherever it hits the line, exiting on the side, which is your output. And that's black, 25%, 50, 75, and 100. So what this S curve is doing is it means that the highlights are getting brighter, while the shadows are getting darker. By dragging this area down, it means the shadows get darker without affecting the highlights. By dragging the highlights up there, the highlights get brighter without affecting the shadows. And of course, when it starts out, it's flat. There is no change. Common curves for Luma that you'll want to know. Brightening an image. Darkening an image. Although, in truth, really the midtones adjustment in color wheels or color board is going to do something very similar, leaving the highlights and shadows exactly where they are. Then you've got your S curve to increase contrast. You've got an inverted S curve to decrease contrast. And then you can do fancier things, locking the highlights where they are and raising the shadows or lowering the shadows, locking the shadows where they are and raising the highlights or lowering the highlights. There are really plenty of things that you can do to control the contrast. And you can make this as complex as you like, making as many points as you want to get exactly the look that you're going for. Now I'll reset that one more time with that little arrow. How do I know where each part of the image is? Well, you can guess this bright part is probably pretty bright, but I don't need to guess. I click the eyedropper, make sure it's blue, and wherever I click, it will add in a point for me. So if I want to lock that and leave it where it is, but then adjust, say, this green, I can then click the green and move the point that just got created. And then it leaves that point exactly where it was. So you can click anywhere you want and it will highlight. And if it's a sufficient distance away from other control points, it'll simply add another one. So you can lock in a point at the shadows and you'll see it doesn't make a new point. It shows you where it is, but there's already a point in the shadows. So most of the time with curves, you would use them after a color wheels has already been created because that got your tonal range, your black and white, 
in the right place already. And that leaves you free to experiment with the midtones. And it means you don't have to mess around by moving the black point there or lifting the black point by doing that. Or indeed, the same with the white point, doing that or that. You generally want to create S-curves to increase contrast. And be careful of a curve that goes backwards because you're going to mess up your colors. It can be kind of fun for a special effect. And indeed, you can play that. But it's probably going to be not quite what you're looking for. If you need to delete a point, just press the delete key to delete the selected point. And if the eyedropper is active and you don't want it to be, you can deactivate that as well. Luma controls are terrific, but what are these? I'll show you what they do next.